nations you have given. With a world in turmoil, we await once again the birth of our Savior. Today we light the fourth candle in Advent. I invite Roberta and Dan McComb to come up and light the candle now. Today we light the candle of love because we know that Jesus is love. He is our hope that his church will grow as we share his love with each other. In Ephesians 4, 15 to 16, Paul writes, When we speak the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. May we grow in love as we await Christ's return. Please join me in the call to worship and the prayer of approach. This is from Luke 1, the Magnificat. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. Our souls magnify the Lord. With our mouths we proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. Our spirits spirit rejoice in God, God our Savior. Savior. We declare that the steadfast love of the Lord is established forever. His mercy, His mercy is, is to those who fear him, him from, from generation, generation to generation. His faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. He has, he has filled, filled the hungry with good things and, and sent, sent the rich away empty. empty. Let us pray together. Thank, Thank you, God, that, that we are so, so greatly loved by you. We ask that, that as we wait for all your promises to come true and for Christ to come, come again, again, that you would remain present with us. us. Help, Help us today, today and every day, day to worship you, to hear, to hear your, your word, and, and to, to do your will by showing, by showing your love to each other. We ask, we ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem, Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. And before I turn this over to Harry, I would just like to thank him on behalf of everybody at the gardens. Harry came on Tuesday, and they were able to have their first ever communion, and a third of the residents came. Um, two men, and the rest were women, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay, because the ratio is like only 12 men there. So um, it was wonderful. People were, uh, we were both stopped and thanks so much. This was the first service they've had in, in the 18 months that the garden has been open, the first live service. And for them to receive communion was extremely meaningful. In fact, two people stopped me as I was taking the uh, elements back to the kitchen. And there was, there's so much on in December, and with all the issues, they had forgotten, and we gave them the elements then. So we know how meaningful it is. They loved Harry's guitar and voice, and they talked about his mother, which was quite wonderful to hear. So we thank you.
Him or pulpit? There we go. Hi. No, no worries. <laughs> yeah, two things. So first of all, thank you, Peggy. Peggy's filling in when all the rest of our regulars are, are out. Actually, no. We're, we're getting there. If we have a few stumbling, we had no sound, and that was my fault, not yours. So I didn't set it up right. Um, Rene Benoit in Sweden says, no sound. But now, now you have sound. Um, so what else was I going to say? Who else we got out there? Oh, number two. Yeah, so thanks to Leslie. She set that up for us at the Gardens of Halliburton. So I haven't, uh, now, Brian is there, so he was one of the men. Yeah. And, and Henry, <laughs> so it was it was it was a lot of fun. They, there were they call that the theater? Do they that room? Is that the one they call the? Yes. Yeah. So the, uh, <laughs> some of them go on and watch church. Yeah, Minden was some. Oh yeah, they they've watched online. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'd like to get in on that action, but we start late, and they have supper, lunch at twelve. <laughs> hmm. Right on twelve, and you don't want to miss that. So. From the well, yeah, that's I've, we we had a nice chat with the the lady that sets it up. So uh, this may may actually develop in the new year, um, but but thank you. That was yeah. There, there are seventeen of these nice round comfortable chairs in that room. That everyone was full. Just <laughs> it was a full house. So uh, it was fun. And uh, so I'm just going to say say who we got out here on online. First of all, we have like seventeen or something here today, and. Mostly in the choir, people. So I don't know who you're going to sing to. I'm going to go down there, so you can... <laughs> um, which is great. But but everybody online will be able to hear you too. And uh, we've got Jan and Blair Hampton, and Liz and Gary. What? She says today is Roberta McComb's birthday. <laughs> we should sing Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, dear Roberta. Happy birthday to you. 21. 21. 21 in our hearts and minds. 21. Cheryl Russell says, good morning and Merry Christmas to all. Uh, Jen Tedford says, happy birthday. Roberta, Lisa Harrison says, Merry Christmas. Paul Cornish, Christmas blessings to everyone today and a special blessing for Roberta on her birthday. Paul and Nancy. Now you're getting feted in a big way here. Joy Cooper, blessings to all for Christmas. Dr. René Benoit from Sweden. I'm keeping a very close eye on that Lori Brown. Love. What, what is that? It's always here. I know. She's here. She's here. Rest assured. Uh, Randy and Arlene Birch up in uh, Kinesis Lake. And they were one of the ones that, along with Jan and René, that said no sound. <laughs> so when you first started, they couldn't hear you because. You no, know, it's good. You could. But. We got to carry on. We heard you. We heard you here. Um, so I think that's all announcements wise. Um, oh, so announcements wise, uh, you you probably saw these things, but there is no service here next week. We are live seven o'clock. Well, six forty-five. You want to get on and chat if you can do that sort of thing for Christmas Eve service. Lots of special music that night. Um, so it is recorded, but it will be premiered at. Uh, on Christmas Eve at 7 o'clock. Well, 6.45, but... No, no. So, yeah, so if you want to watch, you can, you, you can watch uh, Christmas Eve again uh, the next day on Christmas Day if you want to go to service. But, uh, yeah, so, but we will be back to service on January 1st, New Year's Day, uh, as usual here. Does that make sense? And uh, if you have a report for the annual report, get it into Lynn by January 10th or else. That's, I'm not what, sure what the else is, but it's, it's Lynn, so. Okay, um, I think it's time for our choir to come on back, and we'll do, do a piece for us. See how you sit. Let's see how you slide up here.
Thanks, choir. That was wonderful. Choir is also featured on the Christmas Eve service, just so you know. Um, yeah, might as well just move from here. We're going to sing Here I Am to Worship, a little contemporary piece-ish. That uh, uh, is actually Adventish. Light of the world, you stepped down into darkness. Just coming of Christ. Open my eyes, let me see. Okay, let's let's stand.
All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Peggy. I've done it a couple of times. Melissa's done it a couple of times. I've done it once or twice. But I forgot to drink in the last two churches, so. Um, all right. Hmm. I think Craig and Maggie should take up the offering today. So. <laughs> Craig, come on on. Yeah. Let us continue to worship the Lord as we present our offerings. Craig, he's very tall. Yeah. Thanks, Craig. Glad he could help us out today. Maggie, she's short. <laughs> no, it's just reality. She's short and he's tall. <laughs> we give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, I trust, O oh Lord, from thee. Okay, time for our prayer. Any uh, additions? Or... Yay. <laughs> Jane got home yesterday. Maybe she's watching, I don't know. Hi. Jane, congr glad, to, glad you made it home. I thought she might. She, she was planning to. That was the plan. Um, anything else? Ruth, is it Ken Evan or Evans? It has an S. Yeah, okay. Oh, he, he died. He passed away. Okay. okay. His son is Glenn. Leslie? Right. Pat. So Leslie has asked us to put Pat. That says her daughter's mother in law. Daughter's. Oh, your daughter in law's mother. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I see. Your daughter in law's mother. And she ended up in Kempville. And she's li she was living where? She's living in Ottawa. And her only Ottawa. Child her only child is in Toronto. So she just got moved to long term care. Anything else? Okay. Let us uh, let us pray. <coughs> Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to continually bring our needs and our our hearts to you in prayer. Our thanks to you in prayer. Um, Lord, teach us how to pray. We 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 spend our lives learning this. So uh, continue to do that, Lord, we pray. Help us today as we bring our requests, our uh, praises, uh, our hearts to you, Lord, that uh, you, you had promised that if we cast our cares upon you, uh, you, you'll take our burden away because you care for us. Lord, so we do that this day. We think of so many issues in our world where their folks are struggling, uh, fleeing their homes sometimes. Uh, there's famine. Oh, Lord, there's war. We think of the war in Ukraine, which has taken a dark turn lately. And uh, we pray for Ukraine and Russia and that the, there might be an end to this war and a saving of lives and, uh, and that you would bring peace, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as sickness continues, uh, we know of many, uh, the little ones are plagued by constant sicknesses these days and our, our, our medical uh, care people are stressed and, and taxed, Lord, and uh, uh, Lord, COVID continues to be an issue. Lord, we pray for relief and we pray for uh, your help and an intervention. Um, Lord, watch over those who are medical personnel and those who are vulnerable, those in hospital, those who are sick, um, and, and comfort those who have, have lost loved ones. Lord, we lift this to you. Lord, hear our prayer and in your love answer and we pray for those on our list, Lord, this day that uh, are in need of your comfort, your intervention in their lives, your healing, your power, your encouragement, whatever that need might be, oh Lord. So we think of uh, the family of Ken Evans this week, Bonnie Jackson, Ryan, Lois Deacon, and Lois Rigney, Max Ward Sr., Myrtle and Bass Boothorn, 
Carolyn Argarides, Margaret Mark, Eleanor, Bev Muir, Olive Cooper. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. And we remember Craig Nichol and Vicki and Jane Johnson, Brian Newstead, Ted Schultz, Alex Buxey, Jessica, Deborah Waterhouse, Corey, Don, Isabel Jolly, Bernice Ross. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. We pray for Walt Griffin Jr., for Victoria Ancaster, for Paul, Kelsey Barnum, John and Millie Payne, Judy Davis, Ron Mark Jr., Mark Beach, and his wife Teresa. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. We pray for Carol Parnell, Maureen Duquette, Chris Rusk, Don and Karen Tran, Darko Knezovich, Steve Wigan, Pat, and others that, Lord, that we bring to you in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer all of our prayers we make in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Uh, we have a thanks from Arlene Birch, and Paul Carner says, thank you, Melissa and choir. Lovely. So you were heard out, out there. Um, I thought of something, but I forgot what it was, so can't tell you. I think I'm calling Leslie back up to read our scripture. Let us read together our prayer of illumination. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Today we read for the scripture of Matthew 1, verses 18 to 25, one of the narratives of the birth of Jesus. Let us remember this with love, hope, peace, and joy. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Together with our families, we will watch the Christmas Eve service, either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or many times, and rejoice in this birth that has made all the difference in our world. Thank you, Leslie. We are going to sing. No, I'm not sure how many verses I, we put up here. I saw, I noticed there's five when I got to play in an Inglesby this morning. <laughs> we may have only the three, I'm not sure. It says 11. 11 signs, so me. Okay. <sighs> 
him, but I sure like it. <laughs> What's that? It is. I haven't said anything. No, I did turn on, but I mumbled, so it sounded like I hadn't. Hopefully. Is it, is it moving? You'll see the, the audio thing moving. Okay. It's good. I was looking at how blurry I am. It's because I've got the... But I think it's okay online. It's not too bad. Not too great, though. No. Sorry about that. Let's pray. Lord, as we consider your word once again this day, we ask for your, your help and your intervention in our thoughts, our hearts, our souls, our consciences. Lord, as we consider this great love uh, of which we speak and sing. Uh, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So there's a movie from 2003. I think they may have watched it at our, our house last night. I wasn't there. Uh, but uh, it's kind of a, for many people, it's an annual thing. It's called Love Actually. Remember this? How many have heard, seen Love Actually? Well, there you go. We're, we're up to like 65, 70%. <laughs> Now, it's, it's a British comedy. It's, it's become a Christmas classic is the thing. It's a weird phenomenon. It is based around Christmas, and uh, it's, uh, it features uh, at least eight couples, 
and they're working out of their relationships or they're falling apart of their relationships, this kind of stuff. So, uh, uh, oh, it's, it's, the, it's the song that kind of popped in, Mar what's it, Mariah Carey's song, you know, all I want for Christmas is you, you know, the, the, which is like one of the, sorry, it's a bad version there, but uh, <laughs> uh, really bad. <laughs> it's, it's one of the, the most, if not so many years, it's like the most popular Christmas song. <laughs> So it, it really pushed that one ahead. It was featured heavily in the song. So, for instance, the stories in this, it's not, a, it's not a Christmas movie as you or I would probably think of a Christmas. Nothing about Jesus really in there. There might be a few carols in the background. Uh, but So, for instance, one of the stories is Colin. Oh, it's got all these famous actors. It's got Hugh Grant and uh, uh, Liam Neeson and Colin Firth and Emma Thompson and a, a host of others. Um, so, for instance, Colin Firth, in his, in his part, he he has this um, Portuguese. Uh, I guess she's she's his housekeeper, and he's a writer of some kind. And anyway, long story is that they, they they kind of fall in love, but they can't speak each other's languages. And then something happens. He ticks her off, as men are wont to do, <laughs> and she goes off to back off to Portugal. Meantime, he learns how to speak Portuguese, by golly, and he learns the language, and he goes down to Portugal, flies down, and the whole community comes around, and he finds her where she's working in a restaurant, and he, he proposes to her in broken Portuguese, very romantic. <laughs> and uh, the whole town is cheering, and, and so he's, he learns, but he learns Portuguese. She's learning English. I mean, uh, so, so they're, they're paying a bit of a price. They're, they're working at it. So... Uh, the, the movie's called Love Actually, so I've called my sermon Love Actualized, you know, where, where you, it goes beyond feeling to actually putting your, you know, doing something that's maybe even sacrificial or that, that uh, expending your, your, your creativity to, uh, to actually show someone love. Uh, the, the movie has a couple of things that I think, uh, this buzz, sorry, I think this does show up in the recording. And I don't know what it is. It's an electronic interference of some kind. It comes and it goes. It's called old wiring. It might be old wiring in the church, and I don't know what to do with that. Well, when was the church built? 1911. So I don't know if they had wiring then. <laughs> yeah. And it's radio interference. Radio interference, stuff like that. Lots of times it doesn't happen, but sometimes it does, and it shows up in the... Well, sorry, but I don't know what to do with that one. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, a couple of things that this movie, I would say, points out and uh, that are important. That, and one is that everyone is looking for love. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the core. It's called love, actually. Uh, everyone, we all are. We're, we're built that way. We're wired for love. We want to be loved. We need to be loved. And we need to love. It's, it's just the way God built us, I would say. I mean, we are the children of God, made in the image and likeness of God, who is love. So it kind of stands to reason that that's, well, I mean, from, from the get-go, from when we're little children, we need to be loved all through life. Uh, so that's why we need each other. So, so that's one thing. And, and I think the second point that it makes is that relationships are hard. <laughs> they take work. And so, you know, I think that the title, love, actually means, you know, what love really looks like. It's not just, you know, I feel, I feel this for someone and therefore everything is going to be happily ever after. It's, I feel this, but also, you know, we need to work at it. And uh, if we don't, doesn't things happen? So love actually. And the world has ever been thus. Since, uh, since uh, you know, the dawn of time. Um, and we, we find an example of this. It could almost be one of the stories that, that floated into love actually. The story uh, that we read today that uh, Leslie just read. Uh, so just a little background to that is 2,000 years ago, of course, marriages across the board were, were arranged. All marriages were, in fact, in the history of the world, almost by far the vast majority of marriages have been arranged. That has been the, the, the way that things were done for most of history. The, the whole thing that we kind of take for granted now uh, is not really the way things were usually done and still are not done in much of, much of the world. You know, this, our idea of, you know, we date and we get to know each other, we fall in love, and then we, we marry each other. That's the kind of way we work. And many people in the world would argue that it's better to have an arranged marriage. Of course, they're wrong. We know that, right? But <laughs> um, that's the way it was. And, of course, that was the way it was for Mary and Joseph. 
They would, it would have been something that was set up for them, maybe when they were little children. And uh, so along comes the day, or the time comes, and uh, it, it says his, the, the language is a little bit confusing because the, their marriage system was kind of in two parts. The engagement was actually kind of like a legal thing. It was basically like a marriage, except it wasn't consummated till the final party and, you know, the whole deal. Uh, the, the you know the, the wedding feast and all that stuff and there's a lot about this in the in in the gospels there's references to wed, the wedding feast and Jesus and his disciples and, and his mother go to the wedding uh, the wedding feast in Cana of Galilee and they run out of wine you probably heard this story and you think how would they run, run out of wine there's these big big jugs but you see they would have a, a wedding that was probably several days long. So, uh, which is co- still common in the in the in many parts of the world. So, uh, so it's arranged, but it was not such a simple deal, was it? So it says uh, his mother was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, um, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Now that throws a little hitch in the drama here. It says, because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, and some of the translations say, I'm not sure what this one was, uh, you know, because he kept the, to the law of Moses as best he could, and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. So, so he could have, you know, basically, it took, from his perspective, she's an adulteress. She got herself pregnant. Was she, he knows it wasn't him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so what, what to do? Well, if he was really ticked off and jealous and angry and upset, he could have disgraced her publicly. In fact, he possibly, uh, I mean, the law of Moses basically, I think, allowed for for her to be stoned for adultery. Um, And there's a story in the Gospel of John about, remember, the the woman that was caught in adultery? And and Jesus says, well, okay, let who is without sin cast the first stone. So that, that was a possibility. Uh, but in any case, and whatever the case, if it was made public, she would be disgraced, probably never find another husband. Her whole family is disgraced, even if, you know, whatever. And so he's trying to think, I, I don't want to do that. I want to somehow just let this sweep it, sweep it away, but I can't marry her. So he's going to divorce her quietly. Um, and then another twist. After he'd considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. It said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So he gets this message from God in a dream, but via an angel in a dream. But he goes for it, and he allows it, and he believes it to be true. So um, long story short, short, uh, Joseph loved God and loved Mary enough to put his love into action. So, you know, whatever doubts he may have had, and I'm guessing he was struggling with them a little bit, <laughs> you know, he went with it. And uh, that's love put into action. He actualized it. I've called, it, I've called this love actualized, this, this message. And, but but there's, there's more to the angel's message. He will, uh, the angel in the dream says to Joseph, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will because he will save his people from their sins. Now, in English, that doesn't really make sense. You know, why would you call somebody Jesus because they're going to save somebody from their people from their sins? Because there's this language interference here. Um, but for some neat reason, the the name of the child is extremely important, and it's it's it through in the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Matthew, where you know it's important that he get this name that you name him this name. And names all through the Bible are very, uh, you know, are, are quite important. <laughs> so um, he used to call him Jesus. Now, the problem is, is we go from language to language to language. So we've gone from, uh, at least we've, we've, we've transliterated from about two, at least two other languages here. So we, we call his name Jesus, but we've transliterated that from the Greek, which is the original text of the New Testament, which says, Jesus, Okay. So that's Jesus, but of course, uh, Joseph and Mary were not Greeks, they were Hebrews, and they probably spoke Aramaic. So the Aramaic or Hebrew word is Yeshua, um, which got transliterated to Jesus in Greek, which got transliterated to Jesus in English. But Yeshua or J- is also is Joshua, so it got changed to Joshua in the English Bibles. So the book of Joshua 
in the Old Testament is actually the book of Yeshua. The, so Joshua has the same name as Jesus, is what I'm saying. It's the, same, it's the same name. So it's just one that's got shifted from Hebrew, Aramaic, to Greek, to English. And in Yeshua means God delivers, God saves, God rescues. And so that's why he's got to be called God rescues, because he will rescue the people from their sins. Now, that's a, in the Jewish mind of Jesus' day, I mean, their scriptures were full of rescuers. Um, you go back to the Hebrew Bible, there's a lot of rescuing went on, from the, especially the, the, the story of uh, you know, the Exodus. So the people are slave, enslaved and in Egypt, and God, who is the big rescuer with a capital R, sends Moses, little rescuer, in to take them out of the land. And then Joshua, his successor, is rescues them further and brings them into the promised land. And then there are this whole succession of rescuers, or, which are also called judges. Remember this book of Judges? I'm giving you a little bit of a Bible lesson here. <laughs> I'm sure you've all read this. Anyway, so, so, you know, Moses and Joshua are kind of the original judges, but then there's a whole bunch that follow them. This, the story is that the, the Israelites will fall away from God all the time. And they'll go and worship the other gods and such. And then God allows other nations to come in and oppress them. And it says, then they cry out to God. And they, they confess and they, they, they plead for his help. And God, God relents and says, okay, he sends them a deliverer or one of the judges. So, that's what, so then Samson, you've heard of Samson, Samson and Delilah, Barak, Deborah, um, a, a whole slew of them. There's like, I don't know, there's over 10 of them. Uh, and the last one is Samuel, who is a deliverer. And then he, the, he, he anoints the kings, Saul and then David. And they are rescued. So all the kings are also rescued. So in the mind of the Jews of Jesus' day, a rescuer, a deliverer, was a political military figure, you know, who would fight for them and, and rescue them. So he, he makes pains. Matthew, in writing this, uh, uh, says, well, he tells us the story of the angels. is because he will save his people from their sins. This God saves. And that's actually huger than being a political military deliverer. Because at the root of all the problems of humanity is sin. I mean, that's the reason there's oppression. That's the reason there's been slavery. That's the reason there's been conquerors. Because of pride and you know, and selfish ambition and uh, hatred and all that kind of stuff, that is at root sin. And Jesus came to deal with the root problem. So Jesus does this at the cross. You can't divorce these two. You never, so this is, we're, we're, you know, we're looking at the coming of Christ, the advent, uh, the love of, of God to send the baby, but the baby is here to, to rescue us uh, through the cross. Peter in his epistle, writes, For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, us, to bring you to God. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous, Christ, for the unrighteous, the rest of us, to bring you to God. That is love actualized. It's love put into action. And Jesus himself taught this in the Gospel of John. Uh, we read this, greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. It kind of puts it in the simple terms here. You can't love somebody more than to die for them. You can't give any, any more than your life, can you? That's the biggest thing you can give. So Jesus says, and, and then Jesus goes on to say, and you are my friends. So uh, he laid, laid Now the really big deal here is that Jesus is not just some messenger or some servant of God. He is God. He is God. And that's strange. That's this weird thing. <laughs> it's hard for many to believe, but it's the essence of Christian faith. It's at the core of what we believe that, that is distinctive about Christianity and about our Christian faith, is that we actually believe, I mean, uh, to me, this is Orthodox Christianity, and people have obviously a hard time to swallow it. The God who made the starry skies, you know, became one of us, completely human. Uh, it's hard to, hard to really get that. Do we understand that? Yeah, no. Does it mean it's not true? Just because we, we can't, there's lots of things we can't understand about God or even about, you know, we, do we understand infinity or, you know, immortality or, or you know, eternity? Can't really grasp that. Eternity in the past, eternity in the future, or that God always was. He had no beginning. 
or the God is three in one. I mean, there's many mysteries so that we can't explain. So that he became human is mind-boggling, but doesn't mean it's not true. So it, I just was reading, I think it was this morning or yesterday, I was reading in my the magazine, I read Christianity Today, I often tell you about there's an article about it, kind of like which, which comparing Christmas and Easter, you know, like uh, which one's bigger. So for, for many of us as Christians, Easter's the bigger deal. I mean, it's, you know, where Christ actually, the, the sacrifice uh, of Christ, the de- his death on the cross, the cross is the symbol of our faith. And then he rose from the dead, conquering death itself. That's huge. The world as, such, as a whole doesn't pay much attention to it. And there's a few, you know, Easter bunny and some eggs and stuff. Christmas is another story. So, so Christmas is about, you know, he who, well, the, the, the creator of the entire cosmos, all, you know, the entire universe of all its galaxies, and, and who has sustained it throughout all its history, and who created and brought to life every living creature, uh, became a human being. And a helpless one at that, like a, not just a full-grown person like Adam seemed to have been, uh, but, but a helpless babe. And that's, uh, that's, you know, stretches, the, stretches credulity a little bit. <laughs> but, but for some reason, our world loves Christmas. You ever, ever notice this? It's, we're in the middle of it right now. Not a lot of people in church, but a lot of people have their lights up and their trees up. And they've been out buying presents and singing the songs, you know. And having the, the Santa Claus parade was the biggest one we've ever had this year. Wild. Some, some strange phenomenon there. Um, there's something about this, even though they don't maybe know what it's all about, it, that, that grasps the public imagination. And that's an opportunity for us as Christians. I mean, th- there's, a, a, there's a, bit of a, a bit of an ear open there to, you know, who this is, this Jesus, this God, God rescues. Um, and, and, and they sing all these carols <laughs> without knowing what they're saying. Well, they're not probably going to sing the one we just sang, but, but uh, low... Uh, See amid the winter's snow, right? But it, it, it's got, we just sang it. Uh, it. Things like, low within a manger lies God who built the starry skies. Okay. Uh, that's just one. So, but they may not sing that, but they'll definitely sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing, which we're about to sing. And it has lines in it like, um, veiled in flesh, veiled in flesh, kind of hidden in flesh, the Godhead see. Lo, the incarnate deity. Deity is a fancy name for God. God in the flesh. Or if we sing uh, O Come All Ye Faithful, which I'm sure we'll do at least uh, Christmas Eve. Um, God of God, light of light, lo, he abhors not the virgin's womb. Everybody's singing this stuff these days, <laughs> which is wonderful. But they know not what they say. That, that's the core of our belief. There's, a, there's a, another song, to go back to our popular songs, re, relatively recent, 1995. It's written by Eric Bazilian and sung by John, Joan Osborne. Remember, what if God is one, was one of us? Remember that? What if God was one of us? Just a slob like one of us, just a stranger on the bus trying to make his way home. Remember that song? I know, I don't sing it well. But <laughs> I mean, okay, fine. I sing it really badly. <laughs> Melissa snorted when I said I don't sing it well, <laughs> and I don't. I, I understand that. I don't. It's not. It's not really that tune. But you got the idea. Um, what if? What if God was one of us, just a slob like one of us, just a stranger on the bus trying to make his way home? And I, whatever I heard, I remember hearing this song the first time. Well, I said, well, yeah, he was. I mean, there's no what if about it. It's exactly what happened. God became one of us, Emmanuel, God with us. And that sacrifice, real love is sacrificial. We're talking about love today as a candle of love. If, you're, if you've ever been a parent, many of us here have, you know that once you have a, a child on the way, your life has changed. It's flipped, and all your focus now is on this person over your own needs, Right? And that doesn't stop once they're born. It turns out it's kind of a lifelong thing. And uh, that's that sacrifice, because that's, that's the essence of love. If you're, if you're married, if you have a wife or a husband, you know that in order for your marriage to work, there's got to be give and take. You can't have it all your own way. <laughs> you know, Love does not insist on its own way. You reciprocate back and forth. Same with any friendship. 
you got a friend. If you're going to keep that friend, you know, you got to understand they, that you got to put up with some stuff, let's just say. <laughs> and they're not perfect like you. That's the thing. That's the problem. <laughs> and so it, that, that's at the core of what love is and, and uh, uh, relationships are all about. God called us to live sacrificially in community, but he leads the way. So when Jesus came, he led the way. I mean, first of all, sacrifice leaves all glory, all power behind and becomes a baby. In Philippians 2, we're told he did not count equality with God something to be grasped. It wasn't like he, you know, he's so humble. It wasn't like he, he, he was worried about losing out, even though he had, as a, as a child, as a babe especially, he didn't know much of anything. He was utterly dependent on his parents. Um, then he lived this life. He was a refugee in solidarity with all refugees. I mean, we hear a lot about refugees these days. I mean, the, the, we, a few years ago, it was the Syrian refugees. Now there are Ukrainian refugees by the millions. Uh, African meth- refugees trying to make their way to Europe. It's a tough, tough place to be. And Jesus, when, when he was little... Uh, Herod was trying to kill him, so his parents had to take him as a refugee into Egypt to keep him safe. Um, He was persecuted, he was hated, he suffered, and he died. (laughs) And he rose again. But all that was for us. This was summed up in his name, Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus. God rescues, given to him at his birth, the name that is synonymous with real, sacrificial, actualized love. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you yourself are pure love. Everything you did, taught, said, uh, Lord, was from love. That you left glory and power behind, took our form, love. Became a refugee, were persecuted, suffered, died out of love. Lord, thank you that you call us from that place of love to be people of love, to love you and to love each other. Lord, we thank you that you have, uh, have given us the, the means whereby we can do that by pouring your Holy Spirit out upon us and calling us to put our trust and faith in you. May we do that, Lord, and may we, 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 uh, we find the strength to be those who are the people and the community of love. For we ask it in your name, Jesus our Lord, you who taught us in prayer to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So just a reminder that there is no service next Sunday on Christmas Day, but we will be back here on New Year's Day. Let's sing, Heart the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs>
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us, both now and always. Amen. Thank you.